Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to just kick this off right now. Uh, so myself, Mark Petrie with Limo Marketer is here with Ken Lucci from Driving Transactions. Ken is uh, a veteran in the industry. He, um, he owned, uh, was it Ambassador Limo, Ken? Ambassador Limousine of Tampa. We've got it from zero on a cold start to a million the first year and then five million a year before we sold it. Yeah, just really incredible results. And so I thought it'd be really helpful. Uh, I've been talking to Ken a lot lately. I don't know if you guys have been watching some of our YouTube videos, but um, I get a lot of questions from newer operators who are just moving from, you know, maybe a ride share to wanting to start a limo business and they don't really know, you know, where to begin. And so Ken is, I mean, it's his favorite thing to do. Whenever I speak with Ken, he's always so excited to talk about how he initially grew his business because that was probably one of the most fun times of your life, right, Ken? Thousand percent. That first two years, absolutely the funnest time I had. And I've grown four businesses in four different industries. Yeah, awesome. All right. Well, hey, I uh, won't talk too much more. Let let's uh, let Ken hop in and take over. And uh, yeah, what are you uh, teaching us today? Well, so just to, to tee it up. I mean, I I had no experience in the limo business when I got in in two thousand seven, in July of seven. And we grew our business a certain way and primarily based on sales that we're going to be talking about today, strategies we've talked about. This, these strategies got me to my first million dollars before we bought, we, then we bought Julie's, then we bought a company called All Star. So the tactics I'm going to share with you, I've done myself. I'm not an academic. Um, you can tell that by my grammar um, and perhaps some of the syntax I use. But this is block and tackling that I've done myself. And when I talk to operators, you know, who may be growing their business based on um, doing a lot of affiliate work. That's good. But I want you to grow your own local clients. And here's how. So to go from a solo operator to or a three, four, five car operator to scale your business. I don't care if your ultimate goal is 10 cars or 100. These strategies will work for you. They'll work for a salesperson that you bring on. They also can work for a, a good chauffeur that you think has got some sales appeal and a good personality. So let's get right into it. Today, we're going to focus on the, the necessity of creating the perfect 60-second elevator pitch. Now, we're going to use this wherever we go with whatever we do. We're going to tailor to our audience. The second is to create that three- to five-minute uh, conversational. It's really an infomercial, but it's a two-way dialogue. If you do it right, you're going to get as much as you give, right? You're going to walk away with some good information from the prospect that you're in front of. But it's a concise, verbal commercial of what you do and why you do it. We're going to talk about creating a personal sales agenda. This sales agenda concept is something I've used for every uh, every business that I have developed, whether it was me doing the sales and then handing off my agenda to the second person I trained to take over when I had to do more administrative or growth leadership stuff. But this is also something I've trained over 200 salespeople in, in other industries to do. It's creating a written agenda of how you're going to do business development um, every week. Identifying the best buyer personas to show for transportation. We're going to dispel a few myths here. We're going to give you some good information. Creating a PSA, personal sales agenda, for your inside sales staff. Let's please, I have a few pet peeves involved in, my, in this industry, and one of them is to stop calling our people inside, answering the phone, selling our services, reservations. First of all, it's demeaning. Second of all, it doesn't really capture what they're supposed to be doing. Okay, If they view their job as taking a lead, giving a price, and then moving on to the next one. That's not what we want. We want a, someone who's trained to understand, yes, you will handle the, in, the incoming reservation, the incoming order from an existing client with perfection, documenting every part of the trip necessary. But you're also going to treat every inquiry like it's a sales opportunity, okay? And I recommend uh, giving a commission to someone for creating a new client to work a little harder instead of just giving a price work harder to find out about that person's needs, how often they travel, how often they're going to need us, and give the person answering the phone in your office a little bit of a commission for that. Now, if we've got husband and wife teams on the call, I probably just got in trouble. I probably just got in trouble with whoever the inside person is or the outside person is saying, you deserve to be paid a commission to create a new account, but that be that as it may. And then we're going to talk about a concept of giving to get, okay? When, when salespeople call me during the day by telephone, it really irritates me because it was not on my agenda. When somebody walks into my office and they interrupt me and they say, you know, I'd like a minute of your time.
to soften that blow, we're going to talk about what you're going to give them. Okay. And it could be an intangible, but we're going to talk about that. The offer, the tan the, uh, the piece of material that you're going to give them. And finally, we're going to do a Q Q and a, I apologize in advance because this is the first time I've done this particular presentation. So I haven't timed it out, but we should have plenty of time for Q and a at the end. So I want you to understand something. You don't have to be a charismatic public speaker. Okay. Now, Bill Gates once said, uh, when he was answering this question, if you had to train your, to teach your daughter or anything, what would you teach her? And he said, I would teach her to be a great communicator and be a great salesperson because you can do anything, sell anything anywhere if you're a good salesperson. But in our case, 80% of success is showing up and looking sharp. Uniform, company tie, name tag with your logo, a separate name tag without your name if you're doing affiliate work. But it's critically important that you develop your brand. And what better way to do that than with, a, with, a, with a, a name tag that has your logo on it? I am a big believer that anybody who works and drives, in, it, it drives your cars, drives your vehicles, or works for you should have business cards. Because even your inside salesperson who only works 40 hours a week, she goes other places. And for the cost of a set of business cards, all she has to do is bring you in one client. The same with chauffeurs. It bothers me. When we see business cards and chauffeurs have to write their name on it, that's good if it's a part-time chauffeur. But if you've got a proven commodity and a full-time chauffeur, you add a lot of dignity to the position. Excuse me, I got to pick up the dog. That's Bentley. Um, <laughs> you have to make the person, make the person, invest the person in the business. Okay. Um, and when you hand that business card out, we're going to talk about how you can make that person feel special. So 80% is showing up and looking sharp. We could nail that. 10% of success is delivering a compelling message that solves the uh, problem for the person you're speaking to. And it involves what you do. It also involves how you make your client feel. You know, when we talk through this, you're going to notice something. I'm not talking about I, I drive people to the airport. That's not what I do. Okay. We're going to talk about how we make the client feel. The other 10% is being memorable by giving them something to remember you by. Now, I'm not talking about handing them a gold bar. I want you to, to practice giving them a business card and giving put, the, put your name on it and say, look, this is my, our VIP phone number or this is my cell number. You call me and I'll take good care of you. And then we're going to talk about an offer on the business. So 80% showing up, 10% is the compelling message. And then how are you going to be memorable to them? Don't sell on price. Sell the value we provide. If it was all about price, they would be taking a yellow taxi to the airport or they'd be taking a dirty Uber car. Sell value. Sell the value of what you do. Okay. So what's a 60-second commercial? Six, I'm sorry, 60-second elevator pitch. Just pretend that you're in an elevator and you're, you're talking to the person. Wherever you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, the elevator pitch is a high-level verbal presentation that you give to people on what you do and it answers the question why people do business with me. Now, I want you to think about the person you're talking to and try to tailor it to them. But an ideal 60 second commercial, and by the way, don't time yourself. It can be 90 seconds, it can be two minutes, but it should be conversational. It should be concise in the specific reasons of what you do and why you do it, and why people do business with you. And it's ideally meant to create confidence and credibility in what you do, okay? Because we provide hospitality, but we provide precision hospitality, and logistics hospitality. So number one, it describes you and the company you represent. Number two, why people do business with you. And I'm going to, tell, I'm going to tweak it here and say, how do you make your client feel when they buy from you? It's not about giving them a ride to, for their wedding. It's not about giving them a ride to the airport. But what problems do you solve and how do you make them feel? And I'm going to give you some 30-second pitch examples. If you can ever be in service, please ask for me. That's your personal offer to them. When I hand somebody a business card and say, hey, I'm Kevin Chief from Driving Transactions, okay? Um, I'm not just handing them a business card. I want you to say, listen, this is, the company, this is the company's number, and this is my personal cell number. Or if you don't want to give out your cell, this is the regular number. I want you to call our VIP line. No offense. A Google phone number that says that you can get to separate your regular inquiries from your VIPs cost you practically nothing. But the idea is you want to make the person feel special. And I'm going to let you figure out what offer you want to give to the person if you want to give them something for trying you the first time, up to you. Then we're going to talk about giving them something tangible to remember you by. 
okay, that is going to prompt them to want to speak to you again and also remember you. So here's some examples. Hi, by the way, that's an old picture. Hi, I'm Ken Lucci. I'm general manager of Ambassador Limousine. By the way, I've never been the owner of any of the companies that I've started. I always am either the general manager or managing director because look at that face. I always look too young to own my own companies, okay? So I was the GM. And I also want to make my company seem like a bigger organization, even at the very start. You know, people come to us. I'm Ken Lucci from Ambassador Limousine. People come to us when they want to, uh, to be sure to get to the airport on time every time in comfort and totally stress-free. Stress, stress free. You can add, you know, our vehicles are at the airport almost 24 hours a day. Now that you see my logo, you'll probably see some of our people. We are early morning and late night experts. We handle everything from luggage, everything, including all your luggage. We monitor every flight that comes in and out. So we're always on time. So that's, that's the start of one uh, 60 second elevator pitch. If I'm meeting somebody and, for, for example, I'm outside a restaurant with my SUV and I'm waiting, people come to us when they want to enjoy a carefree night out with friends. Our SUVs can, can uh, handle as many as three couples. Our sprinters can handle as many as five couples. And so the next time, uh, by the way, we work with every high-end restaurant in your area. So the next time you have a special occasion, Here's my VIP number. Here's my cell number. If you got a birthday or an anniversary coming up or anything special, you call us. We'll take care of everything, including the reservations to the airport. The third possibility might be, you know, people come to us when they want to go to a sporting event. We transport them to and from the sporting event or to the concert so that they can avoid the Uber and taxi lines. Hit it straight between the eyes because somebody who spent uh, $200 on a Taylor Swift ticket does not want to sit and wait in an Uber line and spend 45 minutes looking at their phone. Okay. That's the difference between saying I provide transportation to and from to what I do is I make sure that people don't have to wait. And by the way, we have a special drop off and pickup location at these venues. So the 60 second commercial is kind of elevator pitch rather is tailored to your audience. If I am standing uh, at a wedding venue or if I'm presenting myself to a wedding venue salesperson, my 60-second elevator pitch might be, you know, my name is Ken Lucci. I'm the uh, general manager of Ambassador Limousine. I just brought you one of our SUVs just to, in case you want to see it. But brides choose us because we handle every bit of their transportation from the bachelorette party all the way to the ride to the airport for their honeymoon. We provide guest transportation, and we can give you references of wedding planners. Okay, so your 60-second elevator pitch is a combination of what you do and why they should be listening to you. And we'll talk through it at Q&A to give you a few more if you like. The next piece is a three, three to five minute conversational commercial that is really an extension of the elevator pitch, but it's designed to make the person you're talking to lean in. And it's a little bit more, um, might have a story about something you did, or it might have uh, a specific use case that you want to talk about. So. These are a little bit more customized. I don't want to take a full five minutes going through them, but this is kind of what you should be conveying. Who you are, what you do, and why it's important to that person. So I may use a three to five minute conversational commercial when I'm working a wedding show or when I'm going to an after hours networking event where I have four or five people that, are, that I may have the ability to stand up and say who I am. What clients, uh, what kind of clients you serve and tailor it to the person and why that person cho chooses you. You know, Ambassador Limousine, we do a lot of things. We do everything from corporate service to private clients, taking them to and from the airport. But we're the largest wedding provider because we provide can provide service to the couple, to the wedding party, and then your guests. We have access to every piece of the uh, fleet equipment you would ever need. We can move as many as 300 people from the hotel to the venue, et cetera. So, Three to five minute conversational commercial is really kind of an expanded. It's not an infomercial because ideally you want it to make it a dialogue. So the dialogue is, is by the way, we're, we're going to also give them some reason to use us in a call to action. And again, if I'm at an after hours networking event and I have three or five minutes to present and I'm going to have a rack card with me. I would not be doing a good job if I didn't have a final offer that says every new client that calls us, this is what this is what our new client opportunity is. Um, we were a big one on 
if you create a corporate account with us and put a credit card on file, you will receive automatically our co corporate pricing structure. So that is that is 10% less than the average person who calls in just by creating a corporate account in advance. So what you want to find out from them, because again, dialogue, you know, tell me something. Have, have you already arranged transportation for your wedding? Or how often do you go to the airport? How often do you travel out of town? Um, and if they say, yeah, I've used private transportation, what occasions do you like to use services like mine? You know, my husband and I like to go to concerts. My husband and I make it a habit to go out to dinner a couple of times a month and we don't want to drive. Or we'll use Uber on the way over and we really don't want to try to figure out if there's going to be an Uber on the way back. So if they say that they use Uber, by the way, don't, don't, don't get defensive. You know, many people tell me that. But, you know, we don't have surge pricing. Everything we do is you will know the pricing in advance. And by the way, Uber's gone up 45% on their pricing since the, before the pandemic. So a lot of people who were using Uber tell me that. A lot of people come to us because, first of all, if you're going to the airport at 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm guaranteed to, be, guaranteed to be in your driveway waiting for you and ready. You can't say that about Uber. Less than 2% of all Uber transportation is to and from the airports because they don't know who's going to be on duty at 4 o'clock in the morning. We do. So next time you want to go to the airport, try us. And here's, you know, if you set up an account, this is what I can do for you. Or, you know, we understand people use Uber, but if you're going out with three or four different couples, take a look at our SUVs, take a look at our sprinters, try us on occasion. And by the way, you're going out on a large occasion. If you want to go out for four or five hours, I'll give you the, the sixth hour for free. Or this is my offer to you. Oh, by the way, try us on a special occasion. You, you know, you do a 20-year wedding anniversary coming up. Do you want to do it in an Uber car? Why don't you let us make the res restaurant reservations for you, and we'll reserve our best sedan for you, or we'll re reserve our SUV for you. So a three- to five-minute conversational commercial. I want you to think about it. Your side uh, is what you're going to convey. And at the end, you definitely want to, if you can possibly walk away, their full name and perhaps an email address. Okay. So let's talk about the, your local market. Who is the ideal user of airport service? Well, I, I mean, I, we, we, we buy every research report available on chauffeur transportation. Only 11% of America routinely uses chauffeur transportation more than six times a year. However, about 40% of America uses Uber more than 12 times a year, okay? But here's who's guaranteed to use chauffeur airport service. The top 1% of consumers who are living in the top wealthiest zip code in your marketplace. I don't care where you are. Go on Google and plug in Orlando, wealthiest zip codes, or Boston region, wealthiest zip codes, there'll be a list of the top 25 that come up. The other thing you do is start where you already have existing airport clients. What zip codes are they in? Chances are their neighbors are a pretty good prospect for you. Corporate executives, because guess what? Corporate executives for large employers or public companies, by the way, you could Google largest employers in your area, public companies located in your area, okay? And most of these people are on LinkedIn, but but those are the people that you show for transportation. Your high net worth professionals, the financial planners, surgeons and doctors, best lawyers, bank presidents. And by the way, where do they go? If you've got a fixed base uh, uh, airport that private jets land, you want to make sure you know the manager. You want to know that their front desk people have your cell phone number because a lot of times they'll get last minute requests. Okay. So that's chauffeur and airport transportation. By the way, anytime you're talking to doctors, nurses, excuse me, doctors, lawyers, uh, you go into a bank, you go into a financial plan or operation, who makes the transportation or purchasing decision? Know who the executive assistants are at every one of these locations. When I was an operator, there actually was an association of executive assistants. But in a lot of cases, you'll meet these people at networking groups. But I'm encouraging you to literally walk in the door of these places with something in your hand of value and delivering your 60-second elevator pitch. Okay. Identifying the likely users of SUVs, sprinters, and charter services for dinners out, sports games, concerts, theater, charity events, et cetera. Okay. It's still going to be the top 1%, the wealthiest people. And here's a, maybe a little bit of a clue. You go to one charity event and, and 
And as soon as you go to the second, you're going to see the same people, okay? Because the wealthiest people, I don't care where you are in the country, they all go to charity events, they all go to the theater, they all go, they have uh, pro sports tickets, et cetera. The same kind of people, uh, the same prospect list for your airport service is going to use your SUV service and your Sprinter service. Now, again, who makes the transportation decision in any one of these companies? You should know more than you know, uh, uh, Mark who is the president of XYZ's company, you better know Mark's executive assistant or Mark's office manager. And we're going to talk about bringing the gift and what works. The larger vehicle or group moves, and I know every, everybody in the call doesn't have large equipment, but you can get access to it. And at the end of the day, you can facilitate, you can facilitate a lot of work for other companies that have larger fleets than you because they could be an affiliate for you. You work out a, re a relationship with them where you get a decent commission. But here's who really uses the largest moves. Large employers, whether they have, especially technology companies that do training or bring in clients, they usually have executive assistants, travel managers, uh, or the training managers. By the way, human resource departments at larger employees are always looking for ways to reward employees and take them out in the evening uh, to do team building events. Public companies are huge. They may have a central procurement officer in another city, but we got the largest computer company in Tampa Bay by literally knocking on the door and bringing something and meeting the executive assistants. And I'll give you that technique. Hotels with the largest meeting spaces. Every hotel that can accommodate more than 200 people in a, in a meeting space, you should get to know and you should have in your prospect list, the director of sales, the meeting and events planner, the catering director, the general manager, a little bit high and mighty, but typically if you know who they are, that's great. Let me give you the 60 second elevator pitch. You walk into a hotel, you go to the front desk and you say, my name is Ken Lucci from the Ambassador Limousine. We have a large group that we're coming in and they've asked us to search out hotel meeting spaces. Do you have a meeting planner or your salesperson available that can give me a two minute walkthrough of what you've got. I can't make any promises, but this group is asking us to just give them a list of hotels because they're from out of town and we're handling the transportation. Okay, what are you gonna accomplish there? First of all, you're gonna know their uh, occupancy capacity. Second of all, you're gonna leave there with the name of the director of sales or the meeting planner or the catering director, whoever's in charge of selling the meeting space and showing the meeting space. If you create a relationship with that person, you can network with that person. You can share leads with that person. You created a relationship. We're going to do something on networking a little bit down the road, but you're leaving that space with something valuable, a contact that now knows who you are. Every restaurant with a private room, normally they have a group salesperson. We were the preferred provider at the Palm restaurants for a long time, and they had meeting space, uh, private rooms that could accommodate, if I remember, about 30 people. We walked through the door and said, we have, a, we have a potential group that's looking to do several dinner meetings or several lunch meetings. We'd like to look at your private space. They introduce you to the salesperson, same kind of an idea. By the way, never hurts for you to have a list of all of the hotels and their meeting space capacity on your website, but put it behind an email uh, form so that they have to enter the information in order to download that list. Same with the restaurants and private rooms. We don't take we we take it for granted that everybody who's planning a meeting in the area knows that uh, such and such a hotel can accommodate 250 people. No. So create the list for them. Put it on your website behind the form. So you've got the lead now too. The same with restaurants with private rooms. All of the restaurants in the Tampa Bay market, we had a list of the private rooms and what the capacity was and who the salespeople were. But we hid it behind a form, so they had to put in their email in order in order to get download the list. Uh, conference and convention centers. Uh, any country club that has a huge conference space or anybody that has a convention center in the marketplace, we absolutely need to know who the sales staff is. And again, those businesses are open nine to five in between your trips. Go into the con convention center. If you should be a member of the Convention Visitor Bureau anyway. But go in and say, listen, we're putting together a list. We have a group that's coming in from out of town. 
We don't know whether you're going to use a convention center space or a hotel. Could you, could I set up a time for you to walk me through? The same thing with knowing all your meeting planners, corporate meeting planners and wedding planners in your marketplace and the DMCs and all of the country clubs. Um, by the way, most of them, their websites, they'll have the board of directors um, on their website. You want to know who these people are because those are your influencers and those are your buyers. Okay. So I understand completely that all small business owners have to wear multiple hats. And we're not going to talk about service and operations today. We're going to talk about your hat of business development. Now, some people say to me, Ken, I'm going to hire a salesperson. You know what? Good for you. But no one presents with the passion of the guy who has to pay the bills and the guy who owns the business. And no, uh, people want to create relationships with the business owner. The restaurant manager is going to react differently to you as the owner or the GM of the business when he knows you're a decision maker rather than the guy who has sales in his title. So business development comes down to this. It's one-on-one -on -one phone call and email activity. It's face-to-face -face activity of giving you a 30-second or 60-second elevator pitch and asking for their time. It's prime time selling time. It's nine to five. Face-to-face -face and one-on-one -on -one is nine to five in most cases. Networking events, those may be at dinner time or after hours, you know, happy hours. We did that to get, to get well-known in the space. Wedding sales. Most wedding sales today, the leads are generated during the day because the potential bride is searching online while she's at the office. But leads to call back brides and talk to brides and grooms is usually early evening or Saturday. You can do email prospecting anytime you want, sending out emails. You can do social media posts anytime you want. Don't do it Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. That's prime time selling time. And here's what I always give myself as a test when I was doing things during the day, and I still do it in this job, is what I am doing right now the most important thing I can be doing to add value to my business? Can I schedule this for later? There's a reason why I still work on Saturdays, because I get tons of calls done during the day, Monday through Friday, and I know nobody's going to be bothering me on Saturday. I get most of my writing done and my valuation work done on Saturdays, and I work every Saturday from about 8.30 to 1.30, and it's like working an extra day. That's me. Can someone else do this job? Okay. I understand some of us put our service delivery hat on when we're, doing the, when we're driving. And by the way, those are the funnest times I ever had. But you also have to put your business development hat on in between trips. So this is what I'm asking you to think about is all of these things that you can be doing. So you have to be the chief business development officer of your business. No one can sell your business like you can. Okay. Takeaways. First thing I want you to do after this call is post a calendar in your office to be a guide for all of your marketing activity, okay? 2023, every single month, yes, you can do it electronically, but it still doesn't give you the visual of a calendar on the wall, okay? Yeah, I am old school, I'm old, okay. So major holidays that people use our services, <laughs> New Year's Eve, Valentine's week, the seasons, Christmas season and prom season. Start marketing for prom 30 to 45 days in advance, Market based on scarcity. There are X number of people graduating this year. There's not possibly enough uh, chauffeur transportation vehicles for all of you. Buy early. That way you can get your prices and get a deposit. Local celebrations and festivals. Uh, always events. Every locale has annual celebrations and festivals. <clears throat> the biggest charity events. You want to reach the 1% in your market, the people that are used to chauffeur services. Get involved in the biggest charities in your marketplace. Um, we, I went to every single large charity event in the Tampa Bay region. You saw a picture of me next to a Rolls Royce Phantom. We, you don't have to have a Rolls Royce Phantom to be a success in charity, okay? You just have to be able to generate money and raise money for that. That's a completely different networking uh, time of a presentation. All of your live events and all of your concerts. Taylor Swift tied up Florida for her entire week that she was down there. Start marketing that 60 days in advance. 
if you can get your hands on some tickets or if you can barter out some transportation with the venue, you're on top of your you're on top of your game. OK, um, professional sports team schedules. Again, put it on your calendar. Well, what are you going to do with all of this stuff? We're going to, again, tournaments, private country club events, large association events, grand openings of businesses. It's simple. You should be doing weekly email uh, emails to your existing client base. If you think weekly is too much, make it bi-weekly. <clears throat> okay, we'll talk about that in your PSA. Tell them what's going on in the area. Tell them if they need transportation to let you know. Put on the bottom of your email. By the way, are you traveling this summer or are you planning on a vacation? Book your airport transportation early so you can be sure we don't sell out. Email the stakeholders of these events to say, listen, we're here if you need us. We can help you provide service. So your charity events, you should know who's on the board of directors of these charities. And if, if there's any kind of a partnership you can do, we used to do it. Uh, we were huge in charity. Anybody who used our service to go over and back from the charity or they bought our service for five hours, we used to donate 10% to the charity. OK, guys, we set our own prices. OK, we can do whatever we want. So it's very important that if you have this calendar of events, you use it as the heartbeat of your marketing. Post on social media. Post about Taylor Swift coming into town. Post if you if uh, if you uh, post about uh, the sports teams or the biggest rivalries that are coming up. Okay, I am amazed at the number of people I see on Facebook every day. Okay, um, during the day, and they're not posting about business. They're posting about other stuff. So make it a habit to be the person who brings the information to these groups. The other thing is joining the community and the group uh, pages on social media. There are always mothers groups. There are always student groups. There are always parents groups. And you don't have to hit them through the, you know, hit them in the face with what you do. But following their rules, let everybody know and, and start to get in those groups if you possibly can on social media. Obviously, use the calendar of events in your Google PPC. We used to make a fortune getting tickets, restaurant reservations, and selling them as a package. Um, and that was before the days of Google PPC. I mean, it, it was just before it. So use all of this information because if somebody is Googling Taylor Swift tickets or Red Sox Yankees uh, matchup or whatever the golf tournament, you want to absolutely be in that feed. And the same with social media content. It should be part of your company strategy to post about all of the events that are taking place in your marketplace. By the way, don't be afraid to put this on your website. But again, if you want to know, look at what's going on in the Tampa Bay marketing market, enter your email to see our calendar. So I'm not a digital marketing guy, but I'm going to tell you, we are literally an events-based transportation provider when you look at it. If all we're doing is airport, we're just skimming the surface. Okay, the PSA. This is a business development agenda, okay? So the first year you're out there, you're driving, you get your customer service delivery hat on. Okay, then in between trips, take that hat off and you need to be business development. Create a list of, who, excuse me, who your best prospects are for all services. If you've got an SUV, it's every doctor, every lawyer, every financial planner, every corporate executive in your space. Create a list of the organizations and the network meetings you want to attend. But let's get back up to the prospect list. You can Google largest employers for every one of your cities. And after the pandemic, you may say to me, oh, well, they use a big global network. Yeah, they do. But for the first time since I've been involved in this industry, they're not single sourcing anymore. They go with three, four, five companies deep now because everybody is so busy. And even the largest corporations, the executive assistant wants to say, okay, you're going out tonight, I'm going to call Ken. They want the guy or the gal to call who's going to take care of them. Don't be intimidated because your company is small. Okay, there's a reason why we got from zero to a million dollars in our first year, because we presented as a large company. Okay, I think you, everybody who's successful needs to attend as part of their agenda, uh, their business development agenda, networking meetings, and they need to be part of an association. Okay, what do I mean by that? I didn't make the, a full list. The Chamber of Commerce, okay? But if you're gonna join, you've gotta go. And what a perfect place for you to deliver your 60 second elevator pitch. You got a room full of people, 
That's the perfect place for you to perfect your pitch. Okay. Networking. We used to be members of uh, MPI and a bunch of other networking groups. And the whole idea is you, you're amplifying your message because now everybody in that network group knows that Ken's the limo guy, knows that Ken's the guy that can take them to and from the airport. Start with your own monthly calendar on your phone and input these events and make it a habit that if you're not out driving, you know what weekly events that you can attend. Block out time to visit the, all of these uh, prospects and deliver your 60 second elevator pitch. We're gonna give you some granular ways to do this. So your initial goal, this is up to you. I want you to be able to say, Ken, I'll have the time to deliver my 60 second pitch 10 times this week to 10 people that could do business with me. Make and that the reason why you want to do that is that's the number of impressions, new impressions you're going to make. You know, Mark and I had many conversations about what he does. Nobody does a better job of what he does than what he than what he does. But he can't do it all. He can't spoon feed and make the sale for you. He's created the lead. Okay. He's making electronic impressions for you. You need to make the impressions on the ground with people in your market that will get to know you as, and the way we did it was, hey, Ken's the limo guy. Okay. So you have to employ a strategy to be able to visit them another time. And we'll talk through that a little bit. Your proof that you actually did this is I want you to hand that number of business cards to the person inside your company that sits and answers the phone, who is now going to do inside sales for you, because we'll get to her, his or her PSA in a minute. Your ultimate goal is to ask when and if you can come by, if it's a larger company, and provide more information and give them some updates on travel and transportation. I'm going to give you a real life example. The company's called Tech Data. Every limo company in Tampa Bay had Tech Data as a client, but they all failed on a service level, uh, my opinion. I walked through the door. This was like 1,500 employees. I walked through the door and I gave my 60 second elevator pitch. And I said, I'd like to come in and like, I'd like to sponsor a coffee, uh, coffee break and show all of you travel planners and all your executive assistants some of my fleet. And that landed us a $300,000 a year account by us doing that because we showed them the depth and the breadth of our company. You can also partner with a couple of companies if you're small and you don't have a sprinter or you don't have motor coaches. Yeah, absolutely, but you're but you're sponsoring a time where they can get you're bringing coffee, you're bringing a morning snack, and they're going to go through your equipment. Okay, you want to absolutely create an offer to capture them as a client, whatever it is. You want to make it appear just for them. He said, "I know that your corporation probably uses other companies. That's good. Um, there's never." that there's, I'm not going to be able to take care of all your needs. They're not going to be able to take care of all your needs. I just would like a piece of your business. So here's what we're going to do. If you'd like to open up a corporate account, I will give you my corporate pricing structure. By the way, don't bring prices with you. It's tacky. Okay. Get them to open a corporate account and tell them that you're going to receive your top tier pricing so that you are going to know who's able to purchase transportation, who's the people from their company authorized to make transportation uh, purchases. And you want to leave with business cards or names of emails that your inside salespeople can send data to and information to. Okay. The PSA is not up to me to design for you. If you're, if all you can do is seven, five, five presentations and meet five new people a week, that's fine. But if you can dedicate every Tuesday, that's even better. The PSA is all about a list of all of the people who possibly you could do business with a list of the organizations and networking meetings you want to be a part of, and you create your own your calendar every single month. Okay. Creation of a PSA for your inside sales representatives. You know, we pigeonhole people by saying there are reservations. And I want you, if you want to really, it really upset yourself, look at the number of reservations that come in. I don't care the size of the company. And look at the number of reservations that come each day in a 12-hour period, and then look at how much you actually pay the person. So I would like you to work with the person after you get this marketing calendar of events done, and you post it. Because if it's on your laptop, it's easily forgotten. If it's on your phone, it's easily forgotten. If it's sitting as a poster on your wall, you can't forget it. Okay. So in addition to handling inbound email reservations and inquiries, your inside sales representatives should have written daily sales and marketing activity that's outbound. And here are some examples. 
First, work with them to create, manage, and update the event calendar. Second, research and join the community groups, mothers groups, and area club pages on Facebook. Research and join the brides-to-be, mothers-to-be, wedding and event planner groups on Facebook. Get on LinkedIn and have them research the employee names and their title to all of the area largest employers. Okay, by the way, you want to task them with Googling the largest employers in Orlando, the largest employers in Atlanta, have a blast, okay? But again, that's outreach. That's stuff that they're, they're, they're doing in addition to answering the phones. Oh, I don't have time. Guess what? You can get on Google instead of getting on your own personal phone and posting on Facebook. Okay, so um, research the top professionals in your area. Every lawyer worth the salt is advertising in your region. They're also on LinkedIn. They're also on Facebook. The most of them are, are every financial planner, by the way, every fantastic realtor, okay, and follow the 80-20 rule. 80% of the real estate business, 80% of the lawyering, 80% of the financial planner is being planning is being done by the top 20% of the people in those in those categories. Okay. So that so your entire prospect universe now needs to be added to every single day. So they should be posting about upcoming events on social media 30 days out, 20 days out, and 10 days out. Not on their personal page, on your company page. Uh, if they're really photogenic, put them on Instagram talking about what's coming into town. Create uh, emailing existing or past customers about upcoming events. I forget how often we used to do it. I think we used to do a, an email blast every single, every mm -hmm. other, every other week of what was going on. And you're never really asking for transportation. You're just putting down the bottom. Hey, if you need transportation, call us and ask about our specials for this event. Send out new customer offer cards with a call to action. The cheapest way you can create a lead besides doing PPC and working the leads that Mark gives you is investing in a postcard that you can put inside a gift size envelope because I throw away every piece of mail I get that's, that's a solicitation, but I open every gift card and everything that's handwritten. Exponentially, the chances of that piece of mail getting opened up went up 20 times because somebody hand wrote it. And guess what? They can do that in addition to the inbound work they're doing. But the card should have some sort of an offer or a call to action on it. We're welcoming new clients in our area. We serve people in your zip code already. You may see our vehicles. We're welcoming new clients with $20 off a round trip, $10 off a round trip, or best possible pricing if you make advanced reservations when you buy your airline tickets. Get creative. Sending thank you notes to all of the business cards that the boss brought in. A, a handwritten thank you note, by the way, have them sign your name. Hey, Ken, it was great meeting you at the front desk of the hotel. Here's my card again. We look forward to doing business together. It's a lost art that I guarantee you. One, it will, first of all, will get open. If, if one of your chauffeurs hands deliver it with a, with a gift, it's even better. But sending a thank you note, is, your whole idea is making and leaving a lasting impression. Okay, I'm a big believer on rewarding your inside salespeople when they book new client work, okay? I'm gonna leave that up to you. Especially if, because if you have a new inquiry and you say, wait a minute, Mark created that lead. I don't know if I wanna give this person a commission on it, okay? We're gonna talk something through in a minute to give you a little bit of a different perspective on that. What is the value of one client? The annual customer value of a young professional that travels five, seven, 10 times a year the executive who travels once, twice, three times a month, the family on vacation. I'm going to let you decide if that's a client you want to go after. But what is the value of that wedding? So if Mark creates a wedding lead for you and you want your inside person to do an extra special job, what does it really cost you to spend them $20, $25? Oh, I'm paying their hourly right now. Well, I'll tell you what. When you pay somebody incremental, uh, incremental dollars and a bonus, especially if it's like cash, or an Amazon gift card, it, you cannot imagine how it changes people. But I'm going to let you tell me what your annual customer value is and then figure out how much you want to spend um, to commission your people. So then we're going to talk about a concept of giving to get. I have made some great, great um, connections. We're going to have plenty of time for Q&A.
I've made some great connections in this industry, but the mo fundamentally one of the best was a guy named Arthur Messina that owns Creative Cards. This guy has been in this business for 37 years selling rack cards, brochures, um, you name it, he sells it for promotional material. He's been specializing in the limousine industry for 37 years. He knows what works and the best possible things for you to invest in. Okay, I'm going to tell you what, what we use across the board. First of all, you absolutely should have a rack card. In addition to your business card, any place you go where you could give a 60-second commercial, 60-second elevator pitch, you need a rack card. And your rack card should be a little reaching. Your rack card should have to explain the services you provide and also what do you have access to where you would have an affiliate in your market that you would perhaps be able to get them stretch limousine, sprinter, whatever you don't have. Arthur Messina, I invested in within the first month, we created that relationship and he sold me post-it cubes. I mean, cases of post-it cubes. And he sold me pens. Okay, why did I invest in that? All right, first of all, it wasn't cheap. Post-it notes are not cheap. But I will tell you what, by the time I implemented this, this program and gave my 60 second elevator uh, pitch to every hotel front desk, every hotel concierge, every lawyer reception desk, every doctor reception desk, everybody in Tampa Bay had my company name on that front desk because they had my post-it notes that had Ambassador Limousine on it. We actually on the bottom, the last post-it put a sticker that said, to, to get more post-it notes, call this phone number. And even after I sold the company, people were still calling looking for new post-it notes. Now, you don't give out post-it notes five times if people aren't doing business with you, but I want you to find me a cheaper way, even if you're using small post-it notes, a cheaper way than a 70 cent pencil, a pen, or a small post-it uh, note of making an impression and a reason why you can go back. So the give to get selling methodology is you're taking someone's time. You should be giving them something in return, okay? So I would challenge you to create a killer new client offer and a call to action that is gonna get people to buy from you. And I want you to think about if you close that sale, was maybe $20 off a round trip worth it to you? What is your plan to keep in touch with them and go back to them on occasion and make the rounds? By the way, it normally takes two to three trips for people to get to trust you to buy anything, okay? First trip, they think you're a pest. Second trip, they think you're persistent. Third trip, they're gonna give you business. I'm just telling you the way it works, okay? What can you give them at a small cost that's gonna be a high return on investment? My choice was a post-it cube. Your choice can be a pen. Your choice can also be something more creative. We used to give out candy dishes uh, with can and, and, and ambassador limousine candy. Uh, we used to give out uh, little small plants that I used to buy for 50 cents. I'd go back six months and the plants with my name on it was still, because we had a little magnet, was still on the front desk. I'm going to leave it up to you. But the best person you can establish a relationship with is Arthur Masita from Creative Card. Okay, and he will tell you what other little people have used at work. He will never steer you wrong. And a rack card minimum at a bare minimum is what you need to present your company. So the most creative thing I ever saw in my entire life was somebody that went around giving away hot cookies when they did. They walked in and they did their prospecting. Now, you may think this is crazy. But you can get Otis Funkmeyer frozen cookie dough at Staples. There's a reason it's at Staples. Salespeople use this. They walk in with six hot cookies with a sticker sealed with a sticker that says the name of their company, and they deliver their elevator pitch. They, and it works. Now, it's one of the reasons why we did candy. Uh, in an older pre life, in, a, in another business, I found out one thing. Food works. And when I sold healthcare equipment, we used to do what's called the lunch and learn, which where we, if this only works for larger corporations, it only works for doctors, offices, and lawyers. You may think it's too expensive, but I don't, because I think, uh, I think if you walk into a lawyer's office 
and you offer to do a morning coffee for them and you invest 30 bucks and you're allowed to present in, in a huge law firm that has 20 lawyers, it's worth the cost of admission because you're going to walk out with business cards, but that's up to you. So food makes a great impression. I don't care whether it's just a walk in with candy. I don't care whether you go to the extreme of bringing in donuts or, uh, uh, or cookies or whatever you want to do. But food is an unbelievable icebreaker. I want you to think out of the box because everybody comes in with a business card. But, you know, if you're walking in the door and you've got five pens visible or four pens or whatever you decide or paper cube or a little house plant that they're going to keep, trust me when they tell you, they're not going to turn you away. They're not going to be rude to you. So if you end up only getting two or three business cards out of that to add to your contact list, in my mind, it's worth it. But I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take some questions. Um, by the way, this webinar we put on would not be possible without Mark Petrie. Um, we have a lot of fun doing these. It's not related to what I do anymore. Um, my company does mergers, acquisitions, financial analysis. We have some courses coming up. Um, but I will tell you that I have known Mark's name for a long time. Nobody does what he does as well as he does it with the persistence. He knows what works in our space. So I would encourage you, if you haven't tried him, give it a shot. And uh, we'll take some, some questions. Yeah. So uh, guys, um, there seems to be an issue with the chat. I, I had one or two messages from everyone saying the chat um, isn't working. I know the Q&A works. If anyone has a question, you can either raise your hand. You can put a question in the Q&A. It looks like we have one question from Ron. Uh, hello. What do you suggest to acquire review and video testimonials, offer a discount or a free ride? Well, Okay, a couple of things. Uh, the review, the, you should be using a review tool on every single finished trip. Now, I know that depending upon your reservation software, some of them have a review tool built in, but I know even large companies that are using softwares that don't have a review tool, they send out, they take, a, they take the emails from all the past reservations for that morning, and they send out an ask every, at noontime and an ask at six o'clock. So reviews are absolutely critical. Okay. Anytime you're doing a leisure or private event of any kind, I would offer, I would tell my chauffeurs, listen, if you'd like me to take a group photo or a group video of you so that you can post on social media, that would be terrific. Um, if you've got repeat clients and you let them know, I would, I would, my own personal opinion is I would go to my best clients and we did this because we, we created a video, but I would go, <laughs> shit, back then we had to hire a video crew. I would ask your best clients now to answer the question, why we use Ambassador Limousine and, and just take your smartphone. Uh, if you're really good, you just put it on a, something that, you know, you, your hand won't be shaking. I think it's worthwhile. I would do private asks before I would do a campaign. But as far as reviews, you should you be using an automated review tool. I wrote an article about this three years ago. You can buy a review tool for 60 bucks a month. You can buy a review tool as part of add-ons. You can buy a review tool. They literally canned off the shelf. Will you be able to automatically interface them? I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, you know, I'm not a software guy, but it's worth it at the end of every day to either send a text message or an email, you, you're probably going to, your, your highest results are if you do a text message immediately after the ride ends. But if you send an email, you say, listen, my name is Ken from Ambassador Limousine. I just would like you to rate the service that my staff, that, that our staff gave you today. Could you just please give me a, a rating on it? And by the way, in that email, I would say, if you give us a five, would you please post it online for us and give them a link? 80% um, of corporate buyers look at reviews when they're making buying decisions. By the way, 85% of private clients look at reviews. So it's well worth it doing it. Yeah. Hey, just one thing I'll add. Um, so like video testimonials, there's some really cool software. I posted it in the chat. Hopefully you guys can all see it. It's called videoask.com. And it's an app on your phone where you pretty much, uh, you can shoot a video of yourself asking like a, a question. Like, hey, uh, what do you like most about our service? It sends it to the person and then it, it, it prompts the person to answer with a video on their cell phone. Those are very powerful. If you have a client that you've known for a little while and you have a good relationship, it never hurts to just ask. A lot of people are afraid to ask you shouldn't be. 
will some people say no or or they can't? Yeah, but but it never hurts to ask. And and having video testimonials, nothing really beats those. Everyone knows that you know Google reviews can be faked. You know, lots of these reviews can be faked. Uh, but a really good video testimonial, nothing nothing beats that. Okay, so we have uh, another question here. Uh, from Ladon. I'm an Uber black driver in Cleveland, Ohio. I have one car and three affiliates that I work with. I'm a current client with Mark. I'm trying to grow my business to multiple cars and drivers. How can I grow my business to where I don't need ride share anymore? Oh, God bless you. Um, you know, the, the, from a guy that's looked at 230 companies, financial statements, I can, and done tons of analysis on ride share, the faster you can get away from ride share, the better off you'll be and the more income you'll make. If it were me, the first thing I would do is I would make sure that I, everybody who had, assuming that you have nice equipment, that everybody in the chauffeur space in your region knew who you were and knew about you. And assuming you had legitimate commercial insurance, I would make sure that every limousine company knew who you were. And here's my only insistence. I insist on being paid at the end of the week. Don't let anybody hold your money for 30 days. But the fastest way is for you to become the guy or the gal. You need to, the, 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 in the first year, I sought out the best lawyers, the best doctors, plastic surgeons, by the way, was my key. And I perfected my elevator pitch. And I, I went up and said, listen, um, my name is Ken from the Ambassador Limousine. Anytime you're going out, I'm looking for just a few clients. If you go out uh, at night for dinner, this is my SUV. This is my sedan. Make sure it's perfectly clean. I would give you a frequent client, client pricing. Never say discount. I'm going to give you my frequent cl uh, client pricing. Keep in mind, only 11% of America uses chauffeur transportation. It is the top earners. It's the, it's the wealthier clients. And to do what you want to do, you need to start with five people and get in their orbit. They will know other people who will want to use your service. So I'd start with becoming an affiliate for the reliable limo companies in the area. I would then, as long as you're legit, I would look at becoming an affiliate for some of the larger global networks out there. I cannot say enough good things about Commonwealth. Tammy and Dawson and Billy Placier, who's the affiliate manager at Commonwealth, they're looking for people and they pay very, very well. So I would look at some of the larger networks. Just get the show for Driven Magazine and look at the affiliate central. Send an email saying who you are, what kind of equipment that you have. But the affiliate work is kind of, I want you to use that to keep the wheels greased while you're building your own business. And I want you to have a goal of 10 higher end clients that either travel to the airport several times a month or they go out to dinner several times a month. That'll get you going. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Uh, okay, so one last question it looks like. Um, hi, at what point do you, or hi, at what point do I pay for expensive commercial insurance and port slash airport permits when I'm in new business and I haven't made enough money or clients to pay for those permits, overhead costs, et cetera? Yeah. I, you know, I, I mean, we were, I was blessed when I started, we, we started off like a rocket ship, but what I would do if I were you is I would approach a few of the limo companies that are there. I try to meet with the ones. First of all, you've got to meet with the big ones and meet with the owner and say, would you be willing to help me get a permit? Or would you be able to help me? I, if I get the commercial insurance, I'd like to be able to do work for you. Is there any other, is there any way for us to partner so I can afford to do this? You know, this industry is suffering from a massive capacity problem. 40% of the companies went out of business. And the ones that remain are operating at fleets that are about 60% of what they were. I know that because we've looked at 200 company financials. So they need you. Again, go in looking good. Go in looking fantastic. Make sure your, fleet, your vehicle looks good. And say, right now, I, I'm, I'm only driving for a couple of people, but I want to do this. Can you? Is there a way that we can partner together? You might have to do 30 trips a month for that person to help you financially. But think about it. It's worth it for him because now he's automatically got a chauffeur with a nice car. So he can help, help you find the commercial insurance you need. He can probably hook you up with other people that will use your service. So I would expand my limo company network uh, of people that I know. Um, and then, I, and I also would be a private driver where you don't need those things right now 
for a few people. Uh, I, you can't do that for a hundred people. But I would, I would probably put together a business card and a very quick letter that said, "Look, I'm looking for ten people to be a private driver for, or you know, in this particular area." But I think I'd rather have you go legit as fast as possible. So I would try to find a partner in a limo company. Don't be discouraged if you only if you visit one and they say they won't do it. You find the best limousine companies. I guarantee you, you'll get an owner who says. I'm going to help you. I need you to, this is what we need to do together. I'll give you either an advance or I'll give you a loan or I'll help you get a permit in some way. Um, you may have to drive one of his vehicles. You may have to be a chauffeur for him, but the understanding is that you want to be an operator for him down the road. Yeah. You got to start in the mailroom sometimes, but uh, you know, yeah. that's, yeah. that's how it goes. Uh, hey, so that was the last question. Ken, I can't thank you enough. I'm sure everyone here feels the same way for like just, that was a dynamite hour, learned so much. Um, before we go, Ken, you're releasing a course. Can you can you tell us about the course you have coming up? Sure, here's the deal first. If you guys want to copy this presentation, I'm a give to get kind of guy. Um, it, my email, Mark, do me a favor, can you post my email? Yeah, yeah, of course. Post my email and I'll send you guys this presentation. And it is really worth you making printing this out, making notes on every single page, because I know we went through a lot of information pretty fast. So my company is driving transactions. Um, primarily, we help sellers sell their companies. Normally, they're companies that are over a million dollars in annual sales, been established for a while. We also help people buy companies. Um, we also have courses coming out that will help you grow and grow the right way financially. Um, the courses are the first course we have coming out is on what every limousine company operator, whether he's one car or 100, needs to know about proper financial statements and managing his business by financial statements. What are the metrics that you're going to learn by keeping your financial statements? The second is a course on knowing your costs, which, again, I don't care if you have one car, five, 10 or 100, knowing your costs to, to price your services properly. The course will teach you to input all your costs, input your insurance, input the cost of your fleet loans, your vehicle loans. It calculates how many tires you're going to go through in 40,000 miles. It calculates what your oil changes are going to cost. It's going to calculate what you pay yourself or what you pay a driver. And then it's going to give you pricing that says, look, if you want to make 45% 40, gross margin, this is what you have to charge. Okay. One thing I've learned is after looking at 200 companies, we know the math equation of this industry. You have to keep. 45 to 50 cents out of every dollar after you pay for gas, insurance, vehicle payment, and pay the drivers, maintenance, repair, et cetera. So you need 50 cents after that in order to pay for overhead and in order to make a profit at the end of the year. And with capital becoming more costly, you need to make sure that you're making money so that you can go from one car, two car, three car, or four. You can borrow money to get uh, a little bit further out there. So that's what we do. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Ken. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. And uh, yeah, we'll have the recording out. I'll send it to you all tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I guess have a great uh, what rest of your Wednesday, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity, Mark. I really, really appreciate it. Of course. We'll see Talk you all later. Sure. All right. Bye now. Bye -bye.